Good morning. Um, this is the third in a series of videos on landed costs, setting it up and using it. And in the previous two videos, we talked about setting up charge names and reference lines and, and routes and things like that. And so we also set up um, how to put the charges from landed costs and get those over into cost accounting so they can become um, part of the standard cost of an item. And later on, we'll talk about average and actual cost. But today, I want to talk a little bit about setting up templates that can be used to create trade operations. But more importantly, when we set up the charge names, how we can set up the different allocation methods that are in those different charges. So starting off, we're in receipt accounting because that's where landed costs live. We'll come over here into landed costs and we're just going to go take a look at a couple templates that are out here that I've created. So we'll go to manage trade operation templates. We'll take a look at this advanced charges. Now templates you can set up so that if you're creating trade operations that are consistent on a, on a trade route, for example, um, instead of creating it every time you create a template, then you can just copy it over. It makes it a lot easier. And in this trade operation, I have a template. I have several charges down here at the bottom. And so we'll walk through those. But again, we set up a route, but you don't need routes. That's an option. But um, it's, again, it's a way to segregate different templates. And so, you know, uh, if you have product coming from various places, you can set up different templates templates to, to handle that. So when we set up the template, um, obviously we give it a start, we're gonna have an end date, those kinds of things. And then we start adding charges. Just by clicking plus, you can create a charge. It's gonna ask for a business unit. Um, and then it's gonna ask what charge name you're gonna put on here. And these charge names um, in the first video, I showed how to set these up. Um, you can set up as many charge names as you want, and these will represent the different charges that it's, that you might accumulate as you move product from your supplier to your warehouse. Things like broker trees, storage trees, ocean freight, land freight, air freight, whatever they happen to be. And then as the invoices come in, you can start applying them off against these um, different categories. And we'll also do a, a, one of the final videos I'll do is a walkthrough of the process, how to create the trade operation, how to attach purchase orders to it, how to create estimates and actuals and all those kinds of good things. But here in the charge lines, this is how we determine how we're going to allocate that invoice that comes in from um, wherever, insurance, freight bills, brokers bills, customs duties, whatever those happen to be. And so as an example, we can go here into freight and then we're gonna have different charge bases, aggregate, per unit, percentages, variable, et cetera. So an aggregate, and each one of these is gonna open up different fields over here that'll need to be created. Like if we create an aggregate, this is just, hey, it's $4,000 for freight and we're gonna put the estimate in here. And then how are we gonna allocate it is, is down here. So we're going to allocate this equally by quantity, volume, weight, item value, or manually. Now, volume and weight might insinuate that, hey, you know, I have volumes and weight in the item master, and so it'll go and look at those, and that would be incorrect. Um, quantity, volume, and weight are pretty much handled the same way. It's an allocation based on the base unit of measure. Um, they haven't gone and as far as to say, hey, I have volume in the item master, so let's use that as a way to calculate it. So that that is not how that works. So we're just going to say this is on a unit basis. And then we can come over here and look up our unit, a uh, unit of measure. Um, each, for example. And yeah, if you're familiar with Oracle um, at all, you'll notice that each kind of comes up with this crazy value. I don't know why it's been that way ever since the system came out. I'm not sure why it hasn't been fixed, but there you go. And so that's kind of how you do an aggregate. If you want to do it based on a per unit, you'll notice the amount comes off. And then I can say, well, 
um, freight is $2 a unit. So again, that's another way to allocate. Um, percentage of item prices, again, this rate becomes a percentage versus a dollar. This percentage of other charges, you'll notice all this is grayed out, but we have this related charges here. So what this says is if I have other charges in this trade operation, I can click on here and I can go in and bring in these other charges. And so I can do a percentage of a different charge. So let's say insurance is a percentage of the storage fees. So um, if I set this up as storage and then created insurance, I could do that. I could also set up a tax as an example. So I might have a um, um, some kind of a unit charge and then uh, my tax would be 25% of that unit charge. So this is great when you're starting to deal with VAT taxes and things like that. So these are just other charges that are on the trade operation that you can set up. If you're going to do variable per unit, uh, then you're going to have to tell it what kind of units. Uh, some of these um, percentage of item price, you may need to fill out the suppliers. But generally, you can keep the suppliers blank because, you know, you might have different freight vendors or different um, insurance vendors or whatever. The last thing we do when we, um, I'm going to go back and do this for a second. The last thing that you do when you create a charge line, and you can set this up in the template, or you can wait till you actually create a trade operation to set it up is down here on the bottom this what's called the charge reference filling this out um this is something you put some thought into as um as you're implementing how am i what reference value am i going to use here this reference value is a value that will need to be entered in accounts payable when the invoice comes in in this case for freight and that way, the system knows that that freight invoice is associated with this trade operation. Now, when you set up templates, you don't really need to put this in because this can change from trade operation to trade operation. But it needs to be an, um, a value that's easily found in accounts payable. Um, I don't know. It could be bill of lading number. It could be whatever. But you need to put it in here. Um, whatever it is, it could be any value you want. As long as accounts payable, we'll know that that's the value to put in their AP invoice so that the system knows that they belong together. And then you want to say associate. Um, again, this charge reference is more something that you do when you set up the trade operation. You don't necessarily need to do it in a template. Um, but if it's never going to change, maybe it's a great thing to put in the template, right? So it, it just depends on operationally what you need to do to get this to work for your scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm not going to save this, but you can have different charge bases for each of the different um, lines that you put in. The last one, just real quickly, that I want to touch on um, is this one called um, manual allocation factor. This is where you can manually allocate how this is going to happen. Now, again, in the template, you can't necessarily do that. But when I walk through how to use this, when we set up a trade operation, we're actually going to create estimates. We'll put in a couple invoices and show how the actuals come through. <clears throat> I'll show how when you set up that trade operation, you can actually go in and create this, these manual allocation factors because there is a couple extra steps in that one. So all of this information is in the PowerPoint that I've uh, posted along with this video. Um, the next video will actually go in and create, um, start looking more at um, average and actual costs and then we need to we'll do a walkthrough on the final video of, of the complete flow from beginning to end. Um, hope this is helpful. Look forward to your comments. Thank you.